What a performance from Manchester United. The exact same result as the last time we played in the Premier League against Sheffield United. A solid 3-0 win. And yeah... <sighs> I thought Bruno Fernandes, according to rival fans, was a set-piece merchant from a subpar league in Portugal, but according to this game, that's not really the right uh, review, is it? Um, he was phenomenal again. Uh, I, I saw a lot of people kind of slating him against Norwich uh, in the FA Cup, and I thought that was really, really harsh, because... Even in that game, yeah, a lot of what he tried didn't come off, but he still created the most chances in our team and was still the most likely to do something. And other than Maguire and perhaps Pogba when he came on later in the game, he was, you know, well, he was third in the performances. So, yeah, bar those two, he was the best player. Uh, but in this game, no question, he was the best player and uh, he made everything tick again for, like, the 11th time out of the 12 games he's played or whatever it is. Um... We have struggled against Brighton in the past, so this result was really, really important and it wasn't perhaps as concrete as many thought, although with the performance it kind of was. But what I mean by that is I think since 2017 uh, we haven't beat Brighton at the, the Apex uh, Stadium, is it? Is that what it's called? But yeah, and 1981 was the last time that we beat Brighton at home, I think, or a team in Brighton anyway. But of course they weren't in the top division for a lot of that. But enough of that, in terms of the match... A brilliant performance and a lot of chances created. And I think it was about 20 minutes when we scored our first one. Uh, brilliant work from Mason Greenwood. This boy is so special. Like 18 years old and either foot he can... He's a nightmare for defenders because they don't know when he's going to shoot. And that is such a valuable asset to his game. Uh, you know, as soon as he's one on one, the defender kind of panics and doesn't really know what to do. And he unleashes a shot with his right foot this time, uh, and the keeper has no chance. It's a brilliant finish. And uh, yeah, we already know the comparisons to Robin Van Persie, but there's a reason for that because he is that good, and he, he has the potential to to really excel in his career. And I can't wait. Uh, and he's definitely going to be very hard. Uh, it's going to be very hard for Ollie to drop him. Um, because, yeah, I think he's he's definitely a, a first-team player now. Uh, he's breaking into that XI, and it's going to be very hard for anyone to actually get into it ahead of him. Uh, of course, if we sign Sancho, we'll, we'll figure that out. But anyway, the second goal, uh, it's, it's the first link-up, like direct link-up, where it's an assist and a goal between Pogba and Fernandez. The partnership we've been really, really excited for. Pogba passes it to Fernandez, and he scores. Uh, it was a little bit deflected, but earlier in the game... The exact same scenario practically, Fernandez hit the post, but this time it goes in and yeah, uh, again, a very mature display from Pogba, a very central midfielder's performance. He's kind of letting go of a lot of his showboating, uh, certainly in these last few games, and he's just doing the, the simple things, but also doing the Pogba things, the long passing, uh, the, the vision that he has, particularly in uh, against Norwich when we got the winner uh, for Maguire. That was a brilliant pass from Pogba to initiate that. Um, and yeah, he, he's just, he's literally playing the Perlo, the Skulls, the, uh, the Xavi role, like sitting slightly deeper and allowing his creativity to flow from there pretty much and he's also got that like third dimension where he can get forward if needs be if we need a defense to get unlocked he can still play you know a lot further forward and play a lot more attacking so yeah it's it's really beneficial to have Fernandez and Pogba in the lineup uh, but yeah that was 2-0 uh, solid half Brighton didn't have anything really until they were 3-0 down where they had a couple of chances uh, and De Gea made two wonderful saves I've been critical of him recently but he's just been at the club for nine years now um, I think he's the longest standing team player actually I, I don't know that off the top of my head but I mean Carrick and Rooney have left obviously so I don't know if anyone's been at the club longer than him uh, I, don't, I don't think so I think he's the longest standing current member of Manchester United so yeah he's, just, he's been here over nine years and yeah he made two really good saves late on uh, particularly one where it was a fingertip classic David De Gea save really so that was nice to see got another clean sheet as well and then uh, the third goal for us was a classic Manchester United goal this is what we're known for this is what we want to see 
a ridiculously good counter-attack, brilliant header from Maguire to play it to Matic, who puts a, a pinpoint accurate pass through for Greenwood to run onto, latch onto, puts an unbelievable cross. It's just a cross, but yeah, you know, I'm trying to emphasise it, but it's a good cross, and Fernandez first time, power volley straight into the net, no chance for the keeper, far too powerful for him. Second goal for, for Fernandez, third for Manchester United, and yeah, after that, we were able to sit back, really, and, uh, you know, bring Fernandez, Pogba, Martial, Rashford, and Shaw all off. And Pereira, McTominay, Williams, Igalo, and James on. And bar a couple of little shots from James towards the end of the game, we didn't really have too much more after that. Um, but, yeah, we didn't really need to. We kept the clean sheet. We've kept... Uh, the pressure on Chelsea, who are also on a really great uh, vein of form. We're unbeaten in 15, and I think Chelsea are unbeaten in 7, I think now. But they've played Liverpool, they've played Man City in that run, and Leicester now in the Cup. So, you know, they're looking really, really good. And I know I said we'd finish third again in the Sheffield United video, and I still maintain that. I still think we can. I just think we're definitely, you can quote me on that, but I definitely think we'll finish above Leicester. Chelsea, however, have showed a lot of, um, you know, fight towards the end of the season and they are looking good. So it's a case of whether Chelsea will drop five points more than us before the end of the season because I think the maximum we will drop is four. Two draws potentially, but I reckon we could get max points with the fixtures we've got uh, towards the end of the season. Most of them are literally in the bottom six. Every single one's in the bottom half bar Leicester, who are on a really poor vein of form. So yeah, it's uh, it's just a question of whether we can claw back five points against Chelsea. Uh, well, sorry, no, Chelsea can drop four point, uh, five points against us because obviously they've got a game in hand. We're only two points behind them at the minute. But with that game in hand, if they draw, it's three. If they win, sorry, if they lose, it's five. But anyhow, we've got them in the cup as well. So it's a chance for us to beat them for a fourth time this season. Um, of course, this one will be the hardest one because of the run of form that they're on. It's two. It's probably two. Other than, other than Liverpool, um, probably the two most informed teams in the league at the minute. Uh, so you know, it's a tough FA Cup uh, tie to see who's going to go through. Considering it's at Wembley uh, for the neutral, it's going to be very very good. And yeah, it, it's it's potentially. Just a 50-50, it depends who plays on the well on the day because both are on great form. But of course, Oli has beat Lampard three times this season, so hopefully he can make it a fourth. But I'm looking forward to it, and you would imagine it would be Man City in the final. But you can never really tell with Arsenal because they, they love the FA Cup. They seem to always relish it. Uh, so no matter how bad they are, that seems to be a competition they can get some redemption from. So you never know. It could be Arsenal in the final. It could be Man City. Could be Chelsea, could be Man United, any of the four can get there. But I'm looking forward to it. And as for the Premier League, we just need to keep going. Keep plucking away and do what we can. I reckon we will finish in the top four. What do you think? Uh, but yeah, magisterial Fernandez, to quote that Geordie commentator in Spain. Magisterial. <laughs>